What if I told you that everything you think you know about art is wrong? Got your attention, didn't I? What I mean by this is, rather than cultures that dance their art, venerate, and ritually care for their art, the Western European tradition sees art as static, passive, inert. I've worked with art for a long time, both as an archaeologist and as an art historian. And I am here to tell you that not only is art alive, but it has the power to move us forward and profoundly change the world in which we live. How? By moving society forward through the art of social justice and by positively impacting health with regard to memory retention and pain management. Let's take a look at these concepts, starting with the art of social justice. The specific art of social justice that I want to explore with you is that of what is now known as street art. It's been around for a long time. Street art is nothing new, and it was born out of conflicts such as the Vietnam War, the struggle for women's rights, and the mistreatment of farm workers. But in 2020, something seismically shifted. Amongst many unprovoked murders, the killing of George Floyd resonated worldwide. From Seattle to Spain, from Austin to Afghanistan, protesters took to the streets and artists took to the walls to express tribute and outrage, horror and hope for change at last. Some artworks were more permanent, some were more temporary, but all sought societal change in places that made perfect sense, such as police departments, but also in unexpected places, such as museums. The changes the activism due to George Floyd has brought about in American museums is absolutely revolutionary. Historically, these institutions were very firmly grounded in the Western European tradition, and change moved slowly. This has brought about amazing changes, and I want to discuss those with you right now. Part of what we're looking at here is the changes brought about by activism and things like that. For example, we are now avidly collecting artworks in American museums that pertain to women and people of color. This has brought about amazing collaborations, such as working with youth, and also having artists write their own labels in their exhibitions. Also, having artists lead tours of their exhibitions. Because of this, art, art historians and curators like me have also changed the way that we research and talk about art. For example, I recently curated an exhibition entitled Countenance that thematically looks at art from a worldview, specifically portraiture. It spanned time periods, and countries represented were Nigeria, Japan, China, the United States, ancient Rome, and Mexico. All of this points to the arts and arts institutions wanting to remain relevant in an ever-shifting world and better serve the communities in which they exist. What do these communities really need, and how can we best bring that about? It's no secret that Florida, the Sunshine State, is home to a great many retirees, all of whom are wanting to remain healthy, increase longevity, and live their best lives. In order to serve this community, we can look at researchers like Dr. Daisy Fancourt, who looks at museums as collaborators in both pain management and memory retention. I find her work absolutely fascinating. Dr. Fancourt found in a study of individuals over 50 years of age that frequent participation in arts activities, such as going to a museum, had a 31% lesser rate of dementia, no matter what, their socioeconomic, health-related, behavioral, or social factors were. 
In a multi-year study on chronic pain, Dr. Fancourt found that frequent participation and engagement in the arts, such as walking around a museum, not only had a lesser chance of pain in current sufferers, but stopped the onset of pain in the first place. It seems that the emotional and visual immersion into the arts played a part in these findings. And that makes sense. Art is communication from artist to audience and often seeks an emotional connection. To further highlight the importance of art immersion, I want to tell you a story. I've taught art history for a long time, and one of the paintings that is always taught and is in all the books is Las Meninas by Velázquez. It is a beautiful painting, and is very important in the art historical canon, both for its innovative use of subjects and its composition. I like the painting a lot, but I never had a particularly emotional connection with it, nor was it my favorite artwork. Incidentally, I don't have a favorite artwork, because that would be like trying to pick a favorite child, <laughs> or in my case, a favorite cat. <laughs> anyway, back to Velazquez. Taught it a lot, but never saw it in person until a museum trip to the Prado in Madrid. I rounded the corner, stood in front of that painting, and started crying. Why? Because art's power lies in its relationship to the body. It was made by humans, for humans, and interaction is mandatory. If it is small, you must move forward, create an intimate space in order to fully see it. If it is large, you must back up, traverse the length of it in order to interact. In other words, art has the power to dictate how it interacts with you. And as such, can lead us forward into a dialogue that impacts every aspect of our lives. Thank you. <laughs>